Hey, Ash here from All Things Dentistry, the place where we're passionate about sharing those unwritten hints and tips of dentistry. Well, if you're new to endo or you're just trying to better your skills, look no further. I've got an online course that is really system-based and it takes my 20 years of experience and my residency training, crams them all together and puts them in a place where you can learn all those hints and tips and hopefully catapult your skills into the new year. Anyways, check us out at allthingsendo.ca and when you join the course, you'll have lifetime access to our Facebook group where it's private, it's safe, and you can ask all the questions you want. Anyways, I hope to see you there. If you haven't heard of the Sucker's MB2 Orifice of Death, it's from John Cademy in this Dental Town post from many years ago. And there's a question in one of our courses talking about Sucker's MB2 Orifice of Death. And you know, what are your, what are your techniques? Well, let me go ahead and go through that. So this is the post from Dentaltown. I've put it the description in the description box below, a link to it. And it's from John Academy, a world-renowned endodontist. And he talks about MB2 and placing a file in it. So this is another article from Dr. Ruddle, and I put that in the description box below as well. And this is such a great illustration because what happens is, let me orient you to the two. So this is, say this is our distal buccal, this is our mesial buccal root, this is MB1, this is MB2, and this is our palatal root. And you can see on the main canals, the MB1, distal buccal, and palate, they go, you know, they open up and they're pretty much straight down to the, you know, with a little bit of a curve, straight down. The problem with MB2 is that it does this, it hides. For some reason, I don't know why, maybe someone knows why, but it hides, and it hides underneath this little dentin shelf. So what you need to do is the sucker's orifice's death is right here. The problem is if you take files and you put them in at this angle, what happens is they usually hit somewhere around here. They start creating a ledge. You get frustrated. The appointment turns into two hours. You get tired, you refer, you're done. Confidence, super low, and you never want to do molars again. I get it. I've been there. Okay, so here's our max three molar. This is actually a zirconia crown. It was very calcified. If I can find the radiograph, I'll put it somewhere here. This is MB1. This is MB2. Now this is what we would call the suckers, or John Academy calls the suckers orifice of death. And you can see that this orifice, we're gonna place a file in it, but it actually, this orifice needs to be troughed to about here in an effort to actually be able to successfully negotiate this canal with reciprocating rotary files, whatever you want, to be able to clean and shape it to the ideal form. Let's just use that. Let's use some fancy words today versus my usual non-fancy words. So this is what we normally all do. We see that canal, we see the orifice, we take a small hand file, this is a number six file in a 21 millimeter length. You take a six file, you're like, yes, I am in. I got the handle flutter, if you're not familiar with that. The handle will flutter if, you're, if the tip is stuck into something. And, you know, it's almost like Looney Tunes with, uh, I think it was one of the, the animals there that just stands like a board and it's like, ding, ding, ding. You know, it's just like, yes, I'm in. The problem is, is that that file wants to progress apically. The canal is not going apically. It's actually moving measly. So what I'm using actually is a Munzburr and it's the Graber. I think it's a, like a quarter round, it's very tiny. And what we're gonna do is we're going to slowly trough, well, first of all, we're gonna trough MB1 just to kind of open it up a little bit. Uh, but then we're gonna trough MB2. So there we go, we're going over to MB2. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, oh, right there. Look at that. This is actually the orifice right there. See the angle? It looks like it's kind of actually angling this way, more mesially. It's hard to draw on a computer screen. And it's white. So that tells me that that is something that's having dentin placed in it. So there it is again. So you see it went from there to there already and we're moving mesially. So it may, it's hard to show this in uh, uh, on a computer screen, but I'm not actually, I'm not pushing apically, I'm moving mesially. We lose it a little bit here. There it is right there. So I'm slowly moving mesially. There it is again. And this, Canal actually, you know, watching this a few years later actually psyched me out because I thought I had moved it measly enough. So there it is kind of like right there. So what I elected to do is you can almost, it almost looks like that canal is actually still aiming measly. And I think that's what was happening. So what I elected to do is take, this is actually not a Munzburr. Now it's a, an electric hand piece. It's slowed down to like 5,000. This is a number two round burr. So it's one millimeter. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to continue troughing the canal mesially. Now you can see all the white debris getting put in that orifice. And that's, oh, look at that. Isn't that, that to me is an absolutely beautiful image right there. That tells me now we have successfully moved our, mes our MB2 canal mesu enough so that potentially I'm able to get my files apically. So I'm going to take my number six short file, watch wind it down. And there's a little secret here I'm going to show you in a second. So let me speed this up. So we're going to watch wind that down and then we're going to switch to an eight and then a 10 and we're going to go through a sequence. If you haven't taught, seen that video on it, I talk about the six, eight, 10 sequence that my buddy Les taught me. We're not making a lot of progression apically. So what I'm going to do now, the next stage of troubleshooting, because that's all root canals is, is we're going to take our wave and go primary and then we're going to open up just a little bit of the coronal portion. You can see a couple things that I'm looking at that I see here. One, there's a lot of irrigant in the canal or in the pulp chamber. So that's helping me lubricate my lubricate my file. That is super critical. Don't do this dry. Not good, especially these tiny little ones. So that's all I did. Look at that. It was just a tiny little bit of opening up that just a little bit of that coronal portion, tiny. And then I'm going to progress my file apically. Okay, so this is the final, the final little bit that's going to show you or hopefully indicate the difference between where we were, where we were, and where we're at. So there's MB1. So let's go. There's MB1. Palette. I'm going backwards here, and then MB2. So let's just go right here. There's MB2. So where we started, you know, we were about here. I can't, I don't think, I, oh yeah. So see where the, the orifice was initially. So that's the MB2 suckers orifice of death. You think you're trying to get into it, but the canal actually moves mesially and then apically. So you need to trough to get into that MB2. Anyways, I hope that's helpful. I'm super grateful you're here. Go ahead and put it in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe and like, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.